You're on mute. And uh, now that you can hear me because I'm on unmute, that helps. So uh, let's start again. So um, how many of you have ever done that? You get uh, stuck into your discussion and then suddenly you realize you're talking to yourself. And uh, interesting, we're going to be talking a little bit about that tonight, and that's called setbacks. So um, welcome to another session, Wednesday evening, 7 to 8 of Entrepreneur's Guide to Thrive. My name is Barry Mitchell. I'm the founder and owner of Uncovering Greatness and really excited to be with you this evening on this uh, on this youth day on this. Uh, yeah, very important. How many of you realize that our youth and young people face some very precarious times? And um, yeah, you know, I was having a discussion the other day and I was saying, you know, is this something really unusual or is it something that every generation goes through? Um, you know, I can remember my grandfather, he went through World War II and my father went through went through um, a bush war in, in Zimbabwe. And, you know, so, you know, turmoil, time, turmoil, setback. I just, uh, I don't know about you, but I like to call it life. So tonight I'm going to be talking about setbacks. How do you, how do you handle, how do you handle setbacks? So I'll set a little bit of, I'll set a little bit of context for you um and uh and yeah maybe that 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 will help a little bit so today i was meant to be teaching um a program that i've taught for the last 15 years called sales explosion um a program that probably nearly 20,000 people all around the world have have attended have come through live and we were super excited that today we were back in a live room we had a we had an awesome group of people that were coming. We had 55 people in the room ready to come. And um, I decided on, um, on Tuesday, how many of you realize that you make decisions and your decisions always have consequences? So before you make the decision, before you go do something, be aware of the consequences. So what did I do? I had a little bit of a snotty nose. Now, nothing Nothing unusual this time of the year when it gets cold. I uh, I often suffer with a with a chest and infection, so I just go. You know what? I've got fifty five people coming in the room. I don't want to be sniffing and create a whole lot of little voices and perceptions. I'm very sure there's nothing wrong with me because I don't really I don't really subscribe to. Um, I I'm not saying that COVID doesn't exist, but I don't really subscribe to it getting me down. So off I went and I had this test, and guess what? It came back positive and I was faced with a decision, big setback, big setback. How many of you can see that? We haven't had a in-house event for 18 months. We've worked damn hard. We had a really excited group of people coming in and we were faced with a decision. Now I could have, I could have just gone into that room this morning. I would have had a couple of sniffles and a little bit of a tight chest, but I believe I've had enough experience in speaking and training and I've uh, I've pushed through events sick before that I probably would have pushed it through. I would have created some little voices, but I would have pushed it through and we would have got it done. But how many of you realize that, you know, when it comes to a code of honor, our code of honor says do everything it takes to win legally, ethically and morally. And on my ethics and my morals, I couldn't with good conscience go into that room. So we discussed it with our team. We put various options on the table. And what we ended up doing was saying, we're going to postpone it to July. And, uh, and it, was, it was a big setback because I have been so looking forward to having live people in the room and, uh, and moving people into sales explosion. So, so we're going to talk a little bit about, a little bit about setbacks and how, do you, and how do you handle setbacks. So the first thing is, Prepare yourself before you make a decision. So before, before I went and had the test, I prepared myself. I said, okay, what are the possible eventual outcomes? What happens if I do test positive? What are the, what are the outcomes? What, what happens if I don't test positive? What happens if people that I was around over the weekend, for example, suddenly test positive? How am I, how am I going to handle, how am I going to handle those things? So, so with my team, 
with Nicole, we sat down and we talked about the options that that could happen. And so step one, be clear on, on the eventualities. Now, it doesn't mean I wasn't angry. In fact, I was really pissed. I was, I was, I got that result and I was, I was upset. I was let down. I felt as though the rug had been pulled out from underneath my feet. And that feeling probably lasted all of five minutes from my walk to my car. And then I said to myself, grow up, face the challenges. What do you need to do? Take action. So the second step is immediately when you get a setback, take action. So I came back. I sat down with Michaela. I got my whole team together. We discussed it. We put a list of we put a list of people together who were coming to the event. We pulled out that list. We shared it. And the whole team within an hour phoned every single person that was coming on that event. And we explained the situation to them. And we were blown away. Every single one of them said, the most important thing is that you get better. The most important thing is that we want to do it live in the room and we'll come in July. Now, I thought, why did that happen? Well, I've been building a community for 15 years, a community of people that we've served, a community of people that have been in and out of our, our rooms, a community of people who, um, who we have built, I found out, an immense amount of trust. And, and because of that trust, we were able to push through the setback and actually create another opportunity. You see, we could have been doing the event right now. However, because I'm stuck away for 10 days, at least 10 days, we're not going to be able to do the event. So we're going to do it in July. And there were a number of people who actually wanted to come on the event, but for various reasons couldn't come. So now we can actually grow the amount of people we're going to have in the room. What an opportunity. Now, I could have got lost in the setback. How many of you often get lost in the setback? Lost in the woe be me. Lost in the this is not fair. And, and I, I have a simple philosophy in life. It is what it is. Let me say that again. It is what it is. So what is it? Take stock of it. Create clarity. Create focus. And then take action. So... Out of every setback, there's always an opportunity. It may not be easy. It may not be easy. But the reality is the opportunity that we created and the ability for us to connect with our clients that are coming actually was very simple. It wasn't easy. We had to get down. We had to connect with people. We had to make a lot of phone calls. But it was, it was very, very simple. So often we get lost in that setback and that little voice comes up that woe be me and it's not fair. And, you know, why is this happening to me? How many of you have ever done that? Why is this happening to me again? And you start saying those silly little things like, it's always me and it never works out. Or is it just me that acts like a child in those little moments of, uh, of little petulant, flipping, irritated moments? Is it just me? Or can you guys connect with that? And what you got to do is you got to put the kid away for a moment and say, move away, shut up, go over there and focus on what needs to be done. And fortunately, I was able to do that. Now, the other important thing around facing setbacks is also the team you surround yourself with. Sadly, many entrepreneurs are surrounding themselves with the wrong people or they're not surrounding themselves with anyone. They're trying to play the game on their own. If you heard what I said, the very first thing I did is I called my whole team together and I said, hey, guys, this is what's happened. Now, what do you think? And each person on the team could give their point of view. Okay, each person on the team could give their point of view. And once they gave their point of view, we weighed it up. And what it did, it allowed me to create reason within my own mind. It allowed me to have the security of having a team decision. How many of you realize sometimes it's much easier to make a team decision than one on your own because you're facing it together? It allowed me to be able to pull the whole team together to take action because they were all bought in on the decision. And, uh, and it allowed me to uh, it allowed me to move them through that setback into into the next step. So, you know, if you've had a business for longer than a couple of weeks, you've faced setbacks. If you've had a business for longer than five years, you've faced many setbacks. If you've had a business, I've been in business for 15 years in this particular business. I just look back and I go, 
we faced many setbacks. We bought a franchise for it, spent a hundred thousand US dollars and a year, three years into it, tanked it. Boom, one and a half million ran in a hole. We um we launched uh we launched we launched an online platform which we thought would absolutely take off. It didn't. We um we made uh we made partnership decisions and found out that we made partner partnership decisions with with the wrong partners. We uh we hired people, we brought people in, we uh we gave a lot and we served people with the belief based on the agreement that uh, we would create a level of exchange and it didn't materialize. So when I look back, it's just another setback. COVID, guess what? It's a setback. Lockdown, 18 months ago, it's a setback. Yes, in many, in, in a number of cases, that setback appeared to be catastrophic. You know, in places like the, uh, in, in, in organizations like, um, uh, like the travel industry, it was catastrophic. And, uh, but what I do know is those, those um, business owners that got up and moved through and moved through the problem have kept going. Those people that got stuck in the problem that fell by the woe be me, not that it was easy. I'm going to say that again, but those that got stuck in the woe be me and it's unfair. And why did this happen? Those people that had a, a if, if you want, their mental strength was not strong enough. Those people who allowed the negative little voices to get on top of them, those people sickled. Those people absolutely struggled. You know, I was speaking to a colleague of mine the other day. He um, is in the travel industry. And through COVID, through lockdown, they have created a multi, multi-million rand business, multi-million rand business because they were forced to think outside. And guess what? In travel. In travel. Why? Because he wouldn't let the setback hold him down. He went out and he said, okay, what do we know? What do we have? Who do we have? And what can we do? Now, there's no guarantee it was going to work. There's no guarantee that when I phoned 55 people and said we're postponing it, there was no guarantee that every single one of them was not going to say, I tell you what, refund us our money. Now, how many of you realize that would have been a massive setback? You know, we've already cash flowed the event. We've already paid for venues. And now you start refunding money. Those are all the little voices. But you can't let those little voices get on top of you until that becomes the reality. So the other part of getting setbacks is letting your little voice run away with things that are not yet real. Should I say that again? Let your, letting your little voice run away with things that are not real. How many of you create your own reality in your head? Perception's reality. So you create all this, what happens if, and then this is going to happen, and that's going to happen. And uh, you get into a panic about something that does not even exist. Now, be aware that it may happen. Think about what would be the eventuality if it did happen, but don't get lost on something that does not exist get stuck into taking the action that you can control. So the only action that we could control was the 55 phone calls that we had to make. That was it. Nothing else. And the way we spoke to our the way we spoke to our clients, the way we connected with our clients, the way we uh the way we we responded, that was the only thing we could control. We couldn't control the response. But in terms of how we communicated them, I believe that was a massive step in being able to create the right outcome. So what's the outcome that you want when you face a setback? Are you deliberate in the actions that you're going to take? And are you focused on the actions that you can control, not on the things that scare you or the things that you have fear around that create a reality that doesn't exist yet? Does that, does that make sense? So, those of you that are live on Facebook, welcome. Great to have you with us. Those of you that are live in the Zoom room with me, welcome. Great to have you with us. So I'm just going to open this up to any questions or comments and just, yeah, ask, has this little chat so far been, been beneficial to you? And, uh, and what questions do you have around facing setbacks? So those of you on Facebook, type it in your comments. Those of you uh, in Zoom, just uh, just either 
put up your hand and I will uh, I will come to you or just type your comment into the chat box. Anybody? Fiona. Thank you, Barry. I hope you're not feeling too poorly. I just wanted to mention that I've recently had a little. My immediate reaction was a knee jerk. Um, I was also very angry and very disappointed. And I must say that um, thanks to you and Nicole, I was able to stem that and work through it and not just run away from the situation as I might have done in the past. And uh, I think, as you say, take action and see what you can do to recover whatever you can recover. And sometimes something better comes out of it. Sometimes it doesn't. But so, uh, Fiona, in my experience, something better always comes out of it. If you take the right next step, something mm. better always comes out of it. No, it, what it I'm saying, what I'm most things don't, saying they don't happen for, that, for an accident. Don't happen by accident. For that situation, you might not think it's it's the best thing, but I truly believe something better is going to take its place. So so you said a very important word, a knee-jerk reaction. So what happens is we take a knee-jerk reaction, emotion goes up intelligence goes down and then we do and say things which create results that we don't want so if you get what i said right in the beginning it's take a step back and go okay where take stock of the situation where am i what are, what are the potential outcomes because what happens is a lot of times people react it with emotion and that creates that creates a result but often it's an adverse result so you step back you go okay so this is where i sit so this is what I need to do. So this is, these are the possible outcomes. What can I control? Right. Let me control what I can what I can control. So your comment is it's very powerful because look how many of you get stuck in knee jerk reactions, and uh, and 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 we panic. You got to stop. Take a breath. Go. Okay. Where do I sit? Why? I I don't know. If you like me, I don't believe there's any accidents on the planet. Things happen. Things happen. And they are what they are. Why? Because they happen. Well, it shouldn't have happened. It happened. You know, I shouldn't have got COVID. I got COVID. Okay, so I'm locked away for 10 days. Now what? Okay, that wasn't in my plans. You go back a week ago, that was not in my plans. Okay, now I'm here for at least 10 days. So what am I going to do about it? Okay, so I had an option tonight. I was feeling a little bit rough and I was like, mm, should I get on this call? Maybe I won't. But then I remember I made a commitment. I made a commitment at the beginning of the year that we would do 52 weeks of this, that we had run a Wednesday night every week. And it was just as easy. It was just as easy not to do it as it was to do it. Now, how many of you would have forgiven me and gone, oh, shame, he's not feeling well. It's fine. You, you get that? But the deal is this. What? I can sit and work on my computer or watch a movie, but I can't get here. So I had to take check of myself again. I discussed it with Nicole. Nicole asked me a simple question. How would it make you feel if you get to 52 weeks and you've missed one? I went, it'll make me feel cuck. So I'm going to do it. Does, does, does that make sense? Very, very simple. Very simple, but I can control that. Now, fortunately, I'm in the position where I'm not stuck in bed and I can speak and all those type of things. But we we'll, so, so, so does, that, does that make sense? And guess what? Now that I'm doing it, I'm feeling a lot better. Why? Because I'm actually taking action. I'm doing something positive. I'm not, I'm not stuck in woe be me world. How many of you realize you're stuck in self-pity party world and it just gets worse? So you get up and you and you take action. So yeah, Fiona, uh, in business, there's always a setback. It's how we deal with it. It's 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 our level of emotional intelligence. That's why, you know, one of the things that I teach, one of the things that I focused on for 15 years. Is personal development and personal development is emotional intelligence starts with emotional intelligence how when things are tough how do you manage your emotion when you have emotional problems coming at you how much control can you take that's the game 
Most people are not working on their emotional intelligence. They're working on all their other intelligence. So what happens is we go to our head. We go to our head and then we start justifying things and then getting upset and getting angry and those type of things. Instead of going, okay, well, stop. Take control. Manage the little voice. Thank you for sharing. I don't need you right now. Okay, stop. Boom. Right. Where do I sit? Take stock of the situation. Breathe. Then go, okay, how am I going to, how am I going to act, not react? Okay, too many people are reactive. They're not active. Very big difference between being active and reactive. So I was just to ask myself the question, what action do I need to take and how can I act? So great question. Great comment. Thank you, Fiona. Awesome. Stu. Stu says, <clears throat> it is what it is. We can't change it. Now, what positive action can we do about it? Am I interpreting? 100%, Stu. You know, it is what it is. Now, if you believe that the world is in a minimum of duality, okay? I, for me, pretty simply, the world exists in a minimum of duality. Duality or more. There's two or more of everything. Up and down, in and out. There's not one. Which means that if you have a setback, on the other side of the setback, there has to be an opportunity, doesn't it? There has to be an opportunity. The question is, can you find the opportunity? And the more you can take control of your little voice, the quicker you can find the opportunity and realize the opportunity that comes out of the setback. You know, one of my, one of, maybe it's not even a gift, it's just something that I've always done, is I've always acted straight through a setback. Always. I've just gone, stuff this, get up, keep going. Stuff this, get up, keep going. Act, act, act. So, so, so part of that is don't react, act, and you will find the positive that comes out of it. There's always a positive. Now, it might not happen today, tomorrow, but it will come. And you guys all know that saying, hindsight is 2020. And when you look back, you go, oh, crap. Now I know why that happened. Oh, now I know why that person screwed me in the deal. Because if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have gone there. I wouldn't have met this person. I wouldn't do what I do today. Does that make sense? So, but it takes, it takes mental strength. It takes emotional intelligence. It takes spiritual intelligence to be able to handle bigger and bigger setbacks to look for the positive that can come out, that can come out of them. So as Stuart says, as is in it, straight talk about the situation as seen by the person as, as is in it. 100% Stuart. You just as is it. Where do we sit? What is it? What can we take control of? How can we act? Now, I, like I said, I don't know if our actions were going to work, but it seemed as a team that those were the best. We discussed them. And that's what we took. Does that make sense? Good job. Any, anyone else? Fiona. If I could just add on to it, what I found so interesting, um, and Stuart, you'll enjoy this as well. When I did the as easing with the people concerned, they couldn't handle it. it. It was one of the weirdest situations I've ever been in. And what, what they resorted to was circular arguments. So they kept getting away, going away from the point and not addressing it directly. And we had a meeting yeah. for over an hour and there's still no answer. So. Yeah. As, as ising is very powerful, especially when you as is with no emotion and you just put it on the table and you say, this is how I feel. This might not be what's going on, but this is how I feel. When you do that, you put the ball in their court. Most people react and emotion goes up and then they attack. And when you have two emotional people having a discussion, well, then you have a bigger problem because you have two idiots arguing. So you just, you just take control of the situation, take control of your emotions and, and manage it from there. So well done. Good job. Anybody else? May I ask something? Greta, of course you can. Um, if you're dealing with a client and you know that the client is actually not in the right, um, but it becomes a one-upmanship situation because I'm, I do lots of interior decorating and I'd rather in an upmarket market. But I often get these clients that think they are the decorator. And eventually, 
it's a no-go zone. How do you handle something like that? That's a that's a great question. Greta, have you been on the Sales Explosion program yet? Um, no, I haven't. I, I, I'm, I'm going to put it out there that I encourage you to come on the Sales Explosion program in July. I tell you why. I teach a skill in that program, and I'll tell you what it is. It's your ability to connect with people and ask questions. So what happens with most people when they get into a one-upmanship is we get into this, I have to prove that I'm right. I'm the expert. I'm going to show you. And what happens is our emotion comes up. So we start telling someone and they, they, because of the nature of human beings, you've been conditioned to be right. You went to school, didn't you, Greta? Yes, but if, you know, in my situation, it's usually an, a very, it's an, um, uh, I, I don't want to, um, I'm very well qualified. I can do, I, I actually do construct, I project manage construction. I conceptualize it. I do all these kinds of things. So, but then uh, I land in a situation where I'm dealing, uh, the last situation that I had, and then I lost a big, big contract because of this. Um, the the, the daughter-in-law phoned me. It's a relocation for her parents, her parents-in-law. Uh, paid my consultation fee. I went and I did the whole thing. But as it progressed, I realized she's actually wanting to teach me, but she doesn't want to teach me, but she doesn't want to take the responsibility. She throws yeah. the responsibility yeah. onto me, but she she wants to do it. Can and you? it's not working. At the moment okay. that I get into that kind of situation, and I often get it, and I'll tell you where I find it. It's women that are that have married up. They've married wealthy men, um, and they themselves are not so sure of themselves. So they want to prove themselves. Um, and I'm there because the other people asked to have me there because of their referrals, and they've heard a lot of me, and this and this and this. But they actually don't want me there. How do so, you handle the situation like that? So, so, Greta, you ask questions. Yeah. I... And, and I don't say this to offend you. I don't care how well qualified you are. I'm very well qualified in what I do. But the biggest way to divide is to tell people. So the mistake we often fall into, and why do we fall into it? It's because of how we've been conditioned. We went to school. We got an education. You were taught that the way you pass is to be right. Yes? So what happens is when people challenge our intellect, or challenge no, our I don't experts. challenge them. I just, I just don't, just ignore it. I've learned in my life to ignore it. I just so, continue. I just continue. I do. When I left, I said, "Fine, this is the situation. Is this what? What is this? What we have decided?" So I'm, uh, I'm going to share. Can I share something with you? Tell ignore, me. Ignoring a situation is 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 just as is just as powerful as addressing it and telling people. Because because we get it we get into an emotional so so if if you get this in the game of sales they're trying to sell you on something they can feel that you know more than them whether you tell them you know more than them or whether you don't so what happens is their emotion goes up because like you say they either might feel insecure they have money they pay you you should do what 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 they want so and and this is not easy but the real skill is being able to is being able to, the real art of sales is being able to get into their world, find their truth, and through the art of asking questions, get them to pivot to change their truth. Because reality is this, they have a truth. Whether you agree with their truth or don't agree with their truth, it doesn't actually matter. That's their truth. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, that so, makes sense. So the real art of sales is getting into their world, find out how they think, and be able to pivot them so that it becomes their idea, not yours. And then you get them to do what you want them to do, but they got themselves to do what you want them to do, but now it's their idea. That's the real, that is the real art of selling. Okay. Thank you does very much. Sense? Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. It, that makes sense. And that and I'll it, have to it, learn. It, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not easy. Why? Because we've been so conditioned to tell. You know, how did we pass, how did we pass school? No, you know what? It's a situation. 
have to handle the money and I have to accept the responsibility of these things. And the, those are the people, the first people that if anything goes wrong, they turn around and say, but you're the specialist, you were supposed to know. And you're actually, you, you're sitting in a catch-22 situation. I'm always thinking at the back of my mind, I can be held responsible for something which I initially didn't agree to. But how do so, I turn <clears throat> this around? Okay, so part of it also is setting up very clear agreements right up front. So your, your business is no different to many other businesses. My business is the same. Um, when I run business coaching clients, um, I can have any client that could turn around to me after a couple of weeks or months and say, yeah, but I'm not growing and you didn't do this and you didn't do that. And I sit and go, oh, okay. Now I can either defend it or I can, or I can learn how to ask questions um, and, and say, you know, I understand that. So, so in, in, in any, and I, and I can, what I can hear is that, is that you, one, you're very passionate Two, you have a very high level of integrity and responsibility. So, so it's, it's very I important. Do. Yeah, I can, it's I can see that important. it's very important to you that you deliver on what you agree to. What's really important is that you make sure right up front, right up front that the agreement is clear and both parties are on the same page. A lot of Thank times you. we think we think we think that everyone agrees, but we don't. Thank you. That is so, a big thing that you've told me now. So how do you get agreement? You ask people what they want. You ask people what they want. It's very, this is very important to agreements. What do you want? Then once you are clear on what they want and what will make them happy, you can make a decision whether you can fulfill that or not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does that help? Very helpful. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Great question. So one of the main issues with my situation is that the agreements, yeah, look, how many of you understand that? We get into business, we get into things, we look back and suddenly we go, okay, the agreements were, weren't clear. So that's not, a, that's not unusual. I mean, I've, I've spent most of my life fighting those type of things. I'm getting better and better and better at it. But, uh, but just create clarity of agreement up front. Then manage them and learn from them. Um, so just keep, just keep, keep, keep getting better, keep improving. Does that make sense? You guys getting some value out of tonight? Good job. Anyone else? Any other questions? Anything on Facebook, Sully? Any comments or questions coming in from Facebook? Nope. In. None tonight. Everyone's everyone's on uh, on holiday. So um, so the other thing I was going to talk to you guys tonight was a little bit about the myths. I thought you know uh, I was thinking it's Youth Day today, and I was thinking how the education system hasn't changed for well over fifty years. And how we're still teaching our youth what, I don't know about you, we were taught 50, 60, 70 years ago, go to school, get a great education so you can get a good job, so you can make lots of money. How many of you think that it's really time as a community that we start changing those type of things? Now, education is incredibly important, but it's that myth of if I'm highly educated, and I call it schooled, actually. I call it highly schooled, not highly educated. If I'm highly educated, I will make money. Well, it gives you an opportunity to make money and it gives you a vehicle to make money, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee you money. And uh, so, you know, some of the myths that I think a lot of disgruntled young people and you guys get this, how many of you can see there's a very disgruntled youth around the world? You know, in South Africa, I can see it and, and I, can, I, I feel for young people. You know, they've been promised, go get a great education and you'll make money. And they can't make money. Why? Because there's a couple of key things. One, they never learned how to sell. You know, um, I had someone reach out to me on Facebook yesterday. Uh, I need some help. I said, sure, what help do you need? I said, uh, I need a job. I said, why do you need a job? I said, I need to make money. I said, you don't need a job to make money. I said, I do. I said, maybe. I said, can you sell? He said, yes. I said, then why do you need a job? 
He said, I have nothing to sell. I said, then you can't sell. Because <clears throat> the first step is, uh, you got to be able to sell yourself into selling something. So as youth and, you know, any young people, and this is not only for young people, this is for every generation, but for the young people, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give you today on Youth Day is that if you want to change your life, you've got to learn how to communicate. You've got to learn how to sell. Why? Because sales equals income, income equals life. Whether you have a degree or don't have a degree, your ability to sell, your ability to communicate will determine the income that you can generate, will determine the life that you live legally, ethically, and morally. But you have to learn how to sell. Too many people are not investing in learning the critical skills that can equip them to generate income, that can equip them to create wealth, that can equip them to build a business. You know, a myth, I have a great idea. Oh, good. How many of you have had great ideas? <clears throat> I have this great idea. I'm going to make millions. Yeah, right. Not if you can't sell, not if you can't connect with people, not if you don't know the core principles. You know, another principle is exchange. Too many young people are sitting around waiting for someone to give them a handout so they can do something. That's not exchange. If you build a business and you get it for free, the principle of exchange, God's principle, a universal principle will kick in at some stage and it'll force you to get into balance. So the more you take without giving back, the more you'll be forced to get into balance at some stage. So you've got to get into exchange. You've got to make sure that in all dealings, are you in fair and equitable exchange? If you are, you safeguard your future. Does that make sense? So a question from Helena on Facebook. How would you have prepared for the setback and would you have handled it differently if you prepared? Um, Helena, I don't know if you picked that up. Um, I did. I did prepare for the setback. So I thought about it before. Um, I sat down and thought about what were the options. So before I went for a COVID test, I'd already, I'd already, I already had outlined some options in my mind. I'd already spoken to some of my team, and uh, and I, so I'd already, I'd already cleared a couple of ways that this thing could go. Um, so right up front, right up front, I I created clarity in my mind so that I didn't react. If that makes sense, so. You know, um, as Stephen Covey teaches, begin with the end in mind. So before I went for the test, I went, okay, what, what, what are the eventualities? What could happen? I could test positive. I could test negative. Some of my team could test positive. Okay, what will we do? <clears throat> so with those eventualities in mind, I passed a couple of options. Once, and then I didn't panic about the option because I waited until I got the facts. The facts were then, I got a positive I got a positive test and I went, okay, now that I know that, what are my options? So there were a couple of options. One, I could get everybody in the room and I could do it. I could do it online from my office. Okay. Two, I could get one of our key senior trainers, Marco, to uh, facilitate the room while I taught from online. Or three, I could postpone it because that's what we had promised people is that we were going to run a live in the room event with me. Now, I had put all three of those options on the table and I opened it up to my team and any other options. And they came back and said, we think this would be the best way. And we made it, we made a decision. So, so we didn't jump around and panic. To the, to the extent that we actually didn't even make a decision. Nicole was, Nicole, my wife, was on a was on a processing call with a client while this was all going on. And I waited for 45 minutes before I made a final decision so that we could involve her as part of our team just to make sure that we were thinking correctly, make sure that we had some clarity. So we didn't, we didn't react, we acted. Does, does that make sense? So, so thank you, Helena, great, great question. Does that help you guys tonight? Any other questions or comments? Yeah, Stuart, content, content versus context. Understand the context first. So when you when you when you really, you know, Stuart, you're getting this, the power of context, yes. Context is everything. Context is everything. Content, content we shove in and take out, but context is everything. So the stronger your personal context, the stronger your cup, the easier it is to handle setbacks. 
Great comment. Anybody it's else? Actually, Any other questions or comments? Stuart, yo. It's actually a question to check that I was interpreting it correct. And Greta picked it Got up it. as a comment towards her, and things may be meant to be as they are. But I was just checking because I've heard you say it a couple of times, and I interpreted it saying, always understand something in context before getting bogged down in the detail of the content. But thank you for the answer. Correct. And, yep. So, things are as they meant to be. Context first, because we get lost in the content. And the content creates all the little voices. What happens if this happens? What happens if da -da 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 -da? Where it's just stop and go, okay, what's the situation? Deal on the facts. Okay. Fiona, does it mean my entire team is in isolation? No. Because uh, some of them have had tests and, they, and, and they're fine. Some of them I didn't have any close connection with for a number of days. So they're good. So it's just uh, it's the people that are – so me and my family are – on a 10 day sabbatical, not a, that it's a sabbatical, it's a working, it's a working shutdown. So, but, uh, but I'm, I'm fortunate. I have a very responsible team and, you know, a, a number of them have made the decision that they'll work from home for the next five or six days, make sure that they, that they don't get any symptoms and, and move from there. So, yeah. And again, you know, it's, you get COVID, you can't panic, you know, you, uh, it is what it is or whatever it is or is what it isn't. I don't know. Uh, so I've got to deal, you deal with what it is and dose yourself, take vitamins, stay healthy, see what happens. Make sense. Cool. So Sully, any comments from your side before I wrap it up? Great. I really hope you guys got value tonight. If you did get value, please just type value in the chat box. And um, and I'm going to wrap it up for this evening. I'm going to see you guys next Wednesday, same time, 7 to 8 p.m. And remember, those of you that want to learn a lot more around mindset, uh, my wife, Nicole, does a program every Wednesday afternoon from 3 to 4 p.m. called You Versus You. She teaches people how to get themselves out of the way of themselves. And uh, from four to five, Marco Martins, who's our uh, heads up entrepreneurship and uncovering greatness for the youth, runs a uh, runs a one hour session with uh, young people. And uh, and from seven to eight every Wednesday, I run Entrepreneurs Guide to Thrive. So great having you all on this. Some superb questions tonight. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you guys. Next week, Wednesday, same time, 7 to 8 p.m. Be blessed. Have an awesome, awesome rest of your public holiday. Have a great week and weekend ahead, and we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. I'm going to stop our recording, Sully.